Hey Star Citizen fans, it's Gloith here from Renegade Squadron. To continue our ship series, today I would like to cover one of the starter ships, the Aurora LN. So what is CIG's take on the Aurora LN? The 2944 Legionnaire model of the tried and true Aurora spacecraft is here. The Legionnaire is the roughest, toughest Aurora yet, capable of mixing it up with skilled dogfighting or safely carrying a pilot to the edge of the known universe. The most trusted line in spacecraft just got better. So where can you buy the Aurora LN? I'll provide a link in the description below. So you're probably wondering what the best way to fit out your Aurora LN is. So this is what it looks like stock. We've got our four size one Bulldogs equipped on auto gimbaled pucks. And then we've got our Dominator 2 missile. We've got our secure hide shield. We've got our EOS quantum. We've got our charger power plant and we've got our bracer cooler. So this isn't a bad setup. But it really depends on what we want to do. Do we want to do PvP or do we want to do PvE? So if you're looking to do PvP, I would recommend this more as a wingman kind of ship, not a, a primary PvP ship to go at it yourself. But if you want a, a setup, you're going to want to go ahead and look at this. You'll see we've swapped out those laser repeaters for four yellow jackets. So the trick here is that these allow shield penetration. So you can do damage even before dropping the shield. So if you fight that bigger target that's got a bigger target that's got a lot of a lot of shields, you can still do damage to the hull. And then we, as you can see, we swapped out those missiles for Tempest. So these are really good because they're hard to spoof because they're cross-sectional. Additionally, you'll see here we've got our Palisade and our Mirage. So the Palisade is our high HP shield, and then we've got our Mirage, which is our instant regen shield. These are the two best shields in the game. However, if you feel like you're good at dodging shots in, you know, quite a bit, you could probably swap both of these out for FR-66s that are got very, very good regen, good buffer, and have a very low um, you know, regen delay. And then as you can see here, we swapped out for the light fire. Now you could go something like a siren if you wanted to like catch targets that were nearby, but for the most part, we want to stick with the light fire because it just it has very, very good range. And then we got the Fire Cascade. I like this one a lot because it provides a very low thermal draw, which is very important. And then we've got our Ultra Flow coolers here. These are the best coolers in the game. So this kind of shows us what our PvP Aurora LN would look like. So to move on, we're going to go ahead and go to our PvE version. So as you can see, we've swapped out the guns for um, Neutron Laser Cannons four of them and they're still on size one gimbal pucks we've got our tempest missiles still we've got our palisade and mirage again for the time being if you're good at dodging shots you could do fr 66s um, for pv you know e i would say stick with the light fire i would not recommend the siren it's just it's more or less if you're trying to catch target again the fire up cascade and our ultra flow coolers so that, again, this is kind of your best PvE build, I would say. The Neutron Cannons just do such a great job at knocking down those shields, so I can't recommend them enough. Um, so yeah. All right, so you got your Aurora LN, or any Aurora ship for that matter, and uh, you know, you're just getting into the game and you're thinking, okay, how do we, how do we make some money with this thing? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you. So one of the things you want to do is uh, go ahead and um, go ahead and get your LN. But before we do that, I just want to show, show you guys again the loadout. And as you can see, we got our four dominators, our EOS quantum drive, our bracer coolers, our charger power plant, our secure hide shield generators, and our weapons. We've got our size one bulldogs on size one gimbal pucks to give us auto gimbal. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get that ship spawned. Your ship has been delivered to the following landing pad. BF7.
cool part about this ship is it does still have a bed, so if you're out in, you know, space and you need to, you know, take a break. And you can do that from here. So one of the things I would recommend you guys do is do overclocking if you've not done that before. And you can do that in the menu, heat, items. And we want to go ahead and overclock our bulldogs. And we want to go to our shields or not overclock those as well. And that's going to provide us um, faster recharge and then keep our weapons um, you know, shooting as fast as possible. We're going to go ahead and take off. We want to be blocking a pad. Gonna put our landing gear up, and we're just gonna do a quick peek and see what's going on above us. You know, we don't know what's going on here. There could be some some pirates. We just want to take a look, make sure everything's fine, and um, for the most part, we should be clear. We'll see if these guys will mess up with us or not. We're gonna try and make some money. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and open up our. Um, map quest system so go ahead and hit F1 and we're gonna go to our contacts manager and what I like to do is make missions with these unauthorized surveillance detected these are good for small ships like the Aurora LN once you get a, bag, a better ship you can start doing these claim jumpers and we always want to take the claim this call to arms and this what this is gonna do is gonna allow us to make money for every pirate we kill. So we're going to go ahead and definitely accept that. And then what we're going to want to do is go ahead and grab that surveillance mission. And just be careful. Make sure you read them. Um, if you find one with two of the Korea ones, we want to make sure we're careful about that. Otherwise, you'll have two of them spawning next to track that. Alright, we're gonna go to our star map. And it's right there, so we're gonna go ahead and click there, set wrap. Now a common mistake I see people make is that they leave Armistice Zone and then they warp. You don't have to leave Armistice Zone to warp. So go ahead, hit B or whatever's on your keyboard, or uh, if you got it on a joystick, and we're going to go ahead and line, and we're going to warp. Bottom drive is now up. Quantum drive is now off. Alright. Okay, try and get rid of that. Okay, so we don't as you can see the auto gimbal isn't on. So we want to hit R as in Romeo. And now we can see the auto gimbal cone is on. So this is gonna allow us to hit targets a lot easier. I'm just gonna put my throttle limiter up a little bit above the red line that helps us. Keeps that velocity. So now what we need to do is destroy monitors. So the important part here is we need to scan. So depending on what you've got set as your scanner, um, I believe with mouse and keyboard it's tab. And then you can right click or you can map it on your joystick. And essentially you see these boxes. This lets you know where there's a, I guess, a monitor that you need to destroy. So we want to scan them first. So I've got this on my joystick so I'm going to just use that instead. 
we're going to throttle up a little bit, about 3,000 kilometers when you want to start braking or slowing down. Just keep scanning it. Yep, see it's flashing now? Now we don't need to scan it again, that's question mark. So now we've got this one, we do not want to shoot this. Do not shoot this yet, we want to find the other ones. Because when we start doing this, we're going to have pirates coming after. There's another one right there, we're going to go for that. I'm going to raise my velocity limiter up, I'm going to afterburner away. Let's do another scan. Should hopefully see it here shortly. Yep, so we found this one. Alright, we're going to scan. Usually there's two next to each other, and a few of them away from... All right, so there's another one right here. Yep, we already got that one. We don't have this one, so we're gonna go this. Need some afterburner. So the important part of call to arms, and it's based pretty much on every mission you have, you need to complete the mission first, then kill the pirates, because if you kill the pirates while you're doing the mission, you won't get any call to arms credit for doing that. So we want to kill the objective first, then go for the pirates that were part of that mission to maximize our money. So we're going to go ahead and since we've got all three, we're going to go ahead and start opening up on these. Make sure you are moving. And the reason I say that is because NPCs, they actually have an issue where their logic will actually cause them to ram you, especially on these, these monitor missions. So make sure you are always moving. Yep, and we can just hear the radar contact. We're gonna make sure we're gonna take a look at that, make sure that's another player as an NPC. Closing on this next monitor. Selecting the target that's in front of me. And I'm gonna start firing. Gonna try and get that killed as quick as possible. Buttons system critical. Buttons system critical. Buttons system critical. I'm just strafing a little bit here, just trying to keep the enemy from hitting me or accidentally ramming me. Alright, we're going to go to our next objective. Engines critical. Radar contact. So yeah, we got a lot of money to make here. We got a timer, as you can see we got few minutes. I'm going to start slowing my roll. I'm going to s stop going as fast as I was before just because I want to make sure I hit that same shield facing so I can take it down. Just make sure you're moving though. Alright, we got him. Alright, we must have got hit with a ship with a gun. That's a problem. We need to use a missile, we'll use it. This guy should be... So yeah, that guy got lucky with this sledge. That'll happen, guy. And again, this is kind of stock. You know, like I said, we want to make sure we got a shimmer and a bulwark. We don't have a shimmer yet. Um, in this case, we're just starting off fresh, trying to make some money. But as soon as you get a shimmer, you're going to want to put that on this ship. That's going to prevent you from dying. Um, and then eventually you're going to upgrade that to a Mirage. And as you can see, we got a thousand credits just for killing that one ship. And if you feel like you need to use missiles, make sure you get that shield facing down, then missile them. So if you want to lock a missile on them, you can. He might have actually gotten my missile, or my uh, missile reactor, yeah. Hey, relax. Alright, there's a missile. I try to use guns as much as possible. Missiles cost money. So yeah, we pretty much, I think, wipe this out. We're just going to do a quick scan. And the reason why I say that is we want to find that station again. Um, because the pirates might be closer to that. I'm going to throttle up. 
Let's see if I can find some more pirates. And we do. See him? Yeah, that's why you do. Come back to the station. More targets to shoot. And if you feel like you're having trouble with these guys, feel free to, you know, use a missile if you have to. I'm just so used to not using them. Because every missile you use, that's credits you're not going to have. It's got to recharge, re-ammo. And as you can see, I'm trying to strafe around him, trying to minimize. You don't want to be fighting him nose to nose the entire time. Again, we're going to go back towards that state. I want to see if we can find some new contacts. Alright, so it looks like we've got everything. Alright, now it's time to go ahead and head back and repair. We're going to go ahead and hit F. Go and find Port Alisar again, or whatever your nearest landing zone is. I'm going to go ahead and warp back. Now the trick with Port Alisar, or, or any kind of like R&R, &R, if there's an issue with arming, refueling, um, repairing. What you can do is, you actually what you want to do is hover above the pad and since I'm not going to actually do a true landing, you don't need to call. But if you start loitering, you might want to just so you don't get a, a fine. But I'll kind of show you guys what I mean. Gonna do a quick look here as we come in. Not that there's uh, some pirate around waiting for us. So we see there's two guys down there. Well, up. I'm burn for the armistice zone. Make sure you don't overshoot. We're just, just going to go ahead and land, or mock land, I, I like to say. I'm going to take my velocity. I'm going to crank it down. And I'm just going to hover above the pad. So as soon as you see this right here, you should be able to repair. We're going to go ahead and hit F1, click on the repair bug. Now since we actually had a server crash, I had to re-log in and come back in. So technically we do have a fresh ship here. But what you want to do is you can click repair and then confirm. What you do not want to do, and okay, we've got some time to do this. but. Whatever you do, you do not want to click one, two, and then hit confirm. You want to do one at a time. Go back. Hydrogen fuel. Again. Go back in. This time we're going to do repair. And what we want to do is take off. Now if we were going to do an actual land, you would call, tell them you're landing, and then you would essentially just hover above the pad, do your repair, whatever you want to call it, and then finally land. So yeah, for the most part, that kind of concludes um, this. So we do have this guy out here sitting in a freelancer. Um, if I had ballistics, I would take him on, but I am not going to get through his shield with 
badgers. So, or not badgers, bulldogs. That uh, concludes this um, tutorial. If you're interested in space combat, feel free to stop by the Renegade Squadron Discord, link below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Renegade Squadron, signing off.